All right. Um, hydrology is probably the single, um, one of the most important things in shaping the restoration of wetlands and especially in maintaining those wetlands long term. And in no place is that probably more true than in large river floodplain systems. And there are many factors that influence the hydrology of a restored uh, or a natural floodplain wetland. Um, some of those cannot be managed, at least not at the site level. So we have things like precipitation and evapotranspiration. Uh, hopefully, as we heard from Jim this morning, as um, we, uh, if we are able to address some of the challenges of global climate change, um, maybe in the future we can do something about precipitation. But for the, the time being, at a site level, things like that are kind of out of our, our ballpark. But at the Nature Conservancy's Emiquan uh, project, beginning a couple of years ago, in 2016, as a matter of fact, we constructed a water control structure in the levee that uh, the levee that separates Emiquan in the background there, a restored wetland from the Illinois River that's in the foreground. And while that structure had a multitude of purposes, a major purpose was to try to restore a more natural or maybe it's less unnatural hydrology at the Emiquan Preserve as that is so important in creating and maintaining those wetland floodplain habitats. Uh, the structure has two concrete culverts that are seven feet tall, eight feet wide each, about 130 feet long, and go through the levee and provide uh, a mechanism by which we can gravity flow water uh, bi-directionally from Emiquan into the river or from the river into Emiquan when the river cooperates. Um, Unfortunately, this was designed based mainly looking backwards at hydrographs, and now it's very clear as the hydrograph seems to be changing pretty rapidly that forward thinking um, is pretty important when you're designing these projects. Luckily, we had also uh, installed two pumps, is two submersible electric pumps capable of pumping just over 30,000 gallons per minute each that provide us the opportunity to move water even when the river isn't cooperating. And such has been the case in recent years when the river has tended to be much higher than normal, even through into and, and sometimes throughout the growing season. So we were dependent upon these pumps. Unfortunately, pumps can fail and these pumps were new, uh, just installed in 2016, but both in 2018 and 2019, when we thought we would use these to do a drawdown, if you will, and this morning Mitch talked a little bit about managing water levels at Chautauqua. We were trying to do something similar here to draw the water down in the summer to give moist soil plants and other aquatic plants uh, opportunity to really thrive, and the pumps went out both years, both in 18 and 19, and in 18 we got a little bit of pumping down done, uh, in 19 not very much but we learned some things from that even so. Uh, now we think we have the pumps fixed, we have them back and installed and we've tested them. And because hydrology is so important uh, for those people that are doing research here, for people that are recreating at Emiquan, and then for the rest, if you're just interested, we thought we would provide just a snippet of our current plans for water level management this coming summer. And I, I emphasize current because these things can change based on equipment, uh, based on what's happening out there on the landscape, and then other practical challenges, for example, the COVID problem we have this year. So our plan currently is that we'll start a drawdown using the pumps on or about the 1st of June. Uh, right now, the water surface elevation at Emiquan is 431.88 feet above sea level. We think it'll be, be a little higher than that June by June. It could be considerably higher than that. Um, the surface area currently is about um, 4,161 acres. And you can see a display there on the right side of the slide, hopefully, that shows the Illinois River is at the right side of the preserve there. North is to the north or to the top. Uh, Highway 7897 is on the left side of that figure. And then the red ring there is where our um, 
our water control structure is. So currently, that you might be able to discern, we have water levels that are about uh, 10 feet, 12 feet deep out in the base of Thompson Lake, which is the lake on the left side, and then we have very shallow on the right side. We have a volume of about 5.2 billion uh, gallons, we, we estimate. Our plan then is to turn the pumps on about the 1st of June, and if the water level is about 432, uh, just a little higher than it is now, we'll pump that down using both pumps to about 428 feet above sea level. So we're gonna drop the water level at Emaquan, hopefully about four feet. Uh, and that change, we think if we run the pumps full time and both run full time, and we don't have any problems, uh, and neglecting the influence of additional precipitation and evapotranspiration, which will get rid of some of that precipitation likely, we think that it'd take about 43 days or so. So we would end this drawdown by the 13th of July. We anticipate that if anything happens, it'll take not longer, not a shorter period of time. So we'll end up going from about 4,100 acres to about 600, 16, excuse me, 1,600 acres of wetted surface out there, water surface, uh, a reduction of about 2,500 acres or about 61%. And so by the time we're finished, it could look like the diagram at the right there, which shows water levels. White would be dried land uh, or land, and the colors there would show much shallower lakes than we presently have. And a lot of this land that, that Oreo was talking about, where non-persistent emergent plants could grow, moist soil plants that can be very important for waterfowl, migrating waterfowl food, both in the spring and the fall. Uh, if those areas are re-inundated. So we're talking about getting rid of about 73% of the water out there using these pumps if they, if they work. What will that look like on the landscape? Well, we did have some experience getting water levels down a little bit in 2018 before our pumps failed. So we're gonna look at what the landscape looked at like uh, from the, uh, the ele an elevated site close to our pump station there. The arrow uh, on that diagram shows the direction we're gonna be looking. So in 19, or in 2018, in May, uh, when we started our drawdown before the pumps failed, looking out to the west into Emaquan, we had a lot of water out there. And I'm gonna jump forward approximately a month at a time by June. Uh, with the pumping and with evapotranspiration, we were starting to dry up some of those areas, and so you see mud flats. Uh, by July, a month later, we're starting to get moist soil plants growing on the vegetation, and then by August, we had quite a bit of vegetation growing out there. So over a 115-day period that year, we were able to have at least one of our pumps running for about 55 days, and we dropped water levels about 3.7 feet about 2,400 acres. So a little less than the pumping we plan to do this year. This is what it looked like on the landscape out there. Amazing moist soil plant production and um, compound, compacting the sediments and aerating those habitats, creating better habitat for the future. So again, just to summarize, currently, currently our plans are to start pumping about the 1st of June. Uh, we think if we can pump continuously, we would be done down to 428 by about the 13th of July, and it'll be interesting to see what happens out there.